Hey brother, welcome to day two of 40 Days of Light. We are exploring the intersection of religion and politics, and we're seeking to bring light to this and not just the heat of our frustration. But we recognize that religion and politics was welded together in the very first promises of the Messiah. Here's what we read at Advent very frequently. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. We're promised more in Daniel chapter 7, where Daniel confronts the governing authorities and says that the king of kings will have all authority, he will have sovereign power, and he is over all the nations for all time. Now, the very first thing we need to know about this king is a shocker to us Americans, and that is that God is not governing through a democracy. He's not governing through a representative republic. He's not a socialist. He's not a communist. He is a sovereign Lord. He is a monarch. He's a king, and his kingdom is established forever. So the entire Bible could really be summarized through three purposes. There is a king of the universe. There's a king over us, and he's come to found a kingdom which has all authority, and he's gathering to himself a royal people, a king, a kingdom, and a royal people. And this week, we're going to explore the implications of what that means to be subjects and citizens of this kind of a king. So that's the first shocker. The second shock is that this kingdom, this king, is not an invader. This is not an invasive, military, visible kingdom. Jesus didn't come and instantly kick out the Romans. We aren't given swords and rifles to establish this kingdom. What are we given? How does this kingdom work? Well, it comes silently. It comes internally. And in Matthew 13 and in many other passages, it begins to describe how this kingdom works. And it works like this. It works like a grain of mustard seed that starts small but grows inevitably. It's like a treasure that's buried in a field that we would sacrifice anything else because it's so valuable to have this in our minds and hearts. It's like yeast that influences the lump. It's like salt that preserves what is valuable. It's like light that penetrates any kind of deep darkness. This is a shocker to us, but this is the beauty of the kingdom of God. Not to make noise, but to do essential things that influence the culture and ourselves from the inside out. So today I want to leave you with this one thought. It's kind of undefined. You'll have to find a way to do it, but you've sung this little song, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. There is a way for you today not to be a, a Pollyanna kind of uh, milk toast person, but to genuinely take your light, shine it into a conversation, Shine it into your family. Shine it into your own heart. When the anger starts to mount, remember who the king is and who you really serve. So I'll see you tomorrow morning as we talk about this, this kingdom some more. God bless you.